So we've now developed a fairly simple game where the car moves forward by pressing space, it can move left or right. If the car goes off the road and touches green, it slows down. But one problem we've got at the minute is if the car goes backways and crosses the finish line, even though it hasn't uh, completed the whole track, lap time is being set to that amount of time. So this makes it very easy for people to cheat in the game and is not a, a good solution at the minute. So what we're going to do now is think about how we might be able to solve that problem. If you think about a real race, what might happen is they might have a marshal standing here, one standing here, one standing here, maybe one up here, making sure that the car uh, stays on the track the whole way around. So using that idea, we're going to create a few sprites and we're going to put them on the track so that you can't actually see them. So we're going to be small black lines going across the track. And what we're going to use then is we're going to use a counter so that the lap time will only reset if the car has crossed every uh, one of the markers on the course. So to do that, the first thing we're going to need is a new variable. So I'm going to click on make a variable and I am going to call it marker count. I'm now going to press OK. And what I want to do, I'm going to use five or six markers probably, put it on each of the corners of the race, and I'm going to change the code so that the time will only reset, uh, the lap time will only be set whenever the car touches the cross, uh, touches the checkpoint, if marker count is equal to five or six, i.e. if the car has went the whole way around the track. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create one of these markers, which is just going to be a small black line. So it's going to be a new sprite. I'm going to make it black because I want it to disappear on top of the track. I don't want the user to actually be able to see it. I'm going to use a paintbrush and I'm just going to draw it something like that. It doesn't matter too much what it looks like because we're not going to be able to see it anyway. That one's probably a bit too big, so I'm now going to rub it out to get a sensible enough size. That looks fine. And then I'm going to drag the first one to where I want it to go. So I'm going to put it there on that first corner. Again, I'm just going to rub out slightly about at the bottom so that you can't see it. So if I click on Sprite 1, now you'll see it flashing up. That's where it is, although the user will not be able to see it um, on whenever they're actually playing the game. So now I've created that Sprite. What we need to do now is to give uh, put in a script so whenever the car touches the marker, the marker count will change to one for the first marker. So I'm going to put this script on the car. And again, it's going to be an event when the game is start. When the green flag is clicked, control. I want this to run at all times during the game. So I'm going to say forever. And I'm going to use the if brick. I'm going to say if the car is touching, so I'm going to use sensing. If the car is touching, I'm going to change the name by clicking on this blue eye. I'm going to call it marker one. I'm going to say if the car is touching marker one, then I want to do something. Now I've created a variable called marker count. I'm going to use that. I am going to change marker count by one so if we just play that now and see how that runs whenever the car crosses the marker which is somewhere around about here marker count should change to one now you can see it's up to 13 which isn't particularly good so again i don't want that to happen i'm going to use a weight and i'm going to just have a weight of say possibly three seconds and that means whenever the car touches it, that it's only going to increase, increase by one. So it's going to go up to 14. Yeah. Now, the problem there that you've seen is marker count is now set to 14. So we're obviously going to have to have a piece of code in here to reset the value of marker count to zero. So again, when the green flag is clicked, I want to set marker count to zero. I'm going to just pop that in there. And that's fine for that one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put markers on different sections of the course. So I'm going to right click this piece of code. I'm going to duplicate it. Marker 2, you can see it's magically appeared over here. I'm going to move that. I'm going to put it somewhere else in the track, possibly around about there. Possibly I'm actually going to put it here because the person might be tempted to go down this way. 
and if they don't go around here then they won't hit the marker so that's fine so we want to put that there i'm going to go back to the red car i'm now going to duplicate this piece of code not the whole thing just the if brick and i'm going to change that so that if touching marker 2 which is this marker which is there on the track then i want to change marker count by one i'm going to zoom out just a bit so you can see that um so that's marker one marker two i'm going to right click duplicate again that's appeared there i'm going to put this one here and right click duplicate marker four appeared where up there so make sure i haven't got marker one by mistake marker one still there marker three is here i'm going to move marker four over to there going to right click duplicate again marker 5 has appeared up here going to drag that down to here possibly and right click I'm going to duplicate where has that appeared that's appeared there marker 5 is there going to put marker 6 here And I'm going to have one more right click duplicate marker 7 has appeared here and I'm going to put that just about there so now we've got seven different markers we haven't plugged them all in yet we've only set up the code for for one or two of them and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the red car and I'm going to right click duplicate put it below in this if I'm going to change that to marker 3 right click duplicate put it below change to marker 4 I'm going to zoom in again right click duplicate change to marker 5 right click duplicate change to marker 6 right click duplicate and change to marker seven. So that should give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I zoom in, I've got marker one, marker two, marker three, marker four, marker five, marker, marker six, marker seven. So that's fine. Now what I need to do is I need to test it. Well, I'm not going to test it just yet. What I'm going to need to change now is I'm going to change the piece of code so that whenever the car touches the finish line. The minute it's set just if the car touches the finish line set lap time to timer and then set timer to zero but what we want to do now is we want to change that we want the time the, the time to become the lap time only if the car has activated all the different markers in that case marker count is going to be equal to seven so we're only going to let this run if marker count is equal to seven so in here we're going to use an operator we're going to use and so we're going, to, we're going to sense if the car is touching, if the finish line is touching the red car and marker count. So I'm going to go to data, I'm going to go to marker count and I'm going to need another operator which is sent equal to and if marker count is equal to 7. I'm going to pop that in so now for the time to reset if we just play it press space so previously i could drive forward go back and it was resetting the lap time now that's not going to work you can see because marker count is not equal to seven so as we go around each of the different you can actually see them because the car is below them which will change in a second but you can see marker count is changing in the top right corner each time you go around the certain part of the track and activate the markers five six seven so you can see now that is working a lot better because it's meaning that the player has to actually complete the track in order to reset the timer and get the lap time 
which means that they can't it makes it more difficult for them to cheat. They could still potentially cheat, sit on this marker for a long time, and every three seconds it would count up and they could go back, but it's a much better solution.